I mean, there's an IoT application that's coming out of what we're doing, um, and that is uh, the smart trash can. I don't know if you've, you've heard about that. This is to help you understand how much waste you're putting in and, and how you might sort that waste into recyclable and so on. And actually, it, I just saw it on Kickstarter uh, today, so it's, it's up there on the web, and one can contribute some money to it. Um, I think more generally, you know, if you had the equivalent of the policeman's body camera, um, and you could basically do a full diary of your daily life, which we can do. But then we developed the software uh, to really be able to compress that down and extract the relevant features, again with privacy and so on. That that from a social science point of view, a behavioral point of view, that would be wonderfully valuable data. So I'd like to see something like that. Yeah, I think the, the machine learning algorithm of the Internet of Things uh, is, to me, most important because it's, you know, it goes back to Eric Kendall. Uh, and then he wrote a great book called The Age of Insight, which was a, an amazing book that goes back to Vienna in 1900. And he tells the story of a woman who held large cocktail parties and she called them salons. And she brought together the greatest artists of the time, Klimt and Kakashka, with Freud and with the head of the medical school of Vienna. And if you, you've seen Klimt's painting, uh, Adele Block Bauer, with the beautiful gold um, dress that she's wearing, if you look at that closely, each of the fractals of that dress are the nuclei of a cell. Because for the first time, right at that moment in 1900, the microscope was created. So here's this amazing artist, Klimt, looking through a microscope for the first time and seeing nuclei of a cell, and he put it into this painting that is, you know, considered by many as one of the, you know, major masterpieces of, of that time. So it was this, it, and the, what the book talks about is this, this collision of art and science coming together and that ultimately what manifested itself out of that was just this huge eruption of, of culture and science and all many of the things that we take for granted today, ultimately the seeds were born at, at that time. So I love the, you know, the alchemy, the, the, the mixing of, of the sciences with culture and with people, you know, one, we're so lucky that we get to work in, and we call it the built environment, and it, it sounds like you know something so clinical, but it's really about people. It's about you know when I walk into a space, how do I feel about that space? Do I feel welcome? Do I feel like I want to leave? Do I feel comfortable? Do I you know? So it's it's less intellectual and more instinctual. Jack Rudin used to say that there were more nerve endings, and I've never ever found out whether it's true or not, but I love the concept. There's more nerve endings in your stomach than in your brain. So trust your gut, trust your instincts, listen to that voice, listen, you know, the, feel those feelings and allow those feelings to come forward if you think something is right. And you know, our instincts about DBOS have been right, and it really wasn't an intellectual exercise, it was really a an instinctual, we want this, we need this, you know, this feels right, let's do it. Um, we didn't set out to do, to end up where we were, it wasn't some grand plan. It was one door closed and another one opened and we just kept going. And we continue to keep going.